A History of the World in 100 Objects was a joint project of BBC Radio 4 and the British Museum, comprising a 100-part radio series written and presented by British Museum director Neil McGregor. In 15-minute presentations broadcast on weekdays on Radio 4, McGregor used objects of ancient art, industry, technology and arms, all of which are in the British Museum's collections, as an introduction to parts of human history. The series, Four Years in Planning, began on 18 January 2010 and was broadcast over 20 weeks. A book to accompany the series, A History of the World in 100 Objects by Neil McGregor, was published by Alan Lane on 28 October 2010. The entire series is also available for download along with an audio version of the book for purchase. The British Museum won the 2011 Art Fund Prize for its role in hosting the project. In 2016, a touring exhibition of several items depicted on the radio program, also titled A History of the World in 100 Objects, traveled to various destinations, including Abu Dhabi, Manorat al Sadiat, Taiwan, National Palace Museum in Taipei, Japan, Tokyo Metropolitan Art Museum in Tokyo, Kyushu National Museum in Daisafu, and Kobe City Museum in Kobe, Australia, Western Australian Museum in Perth and National Museum of Australia in Canberra, and China, National Museum of China in Beijing and Shanghai Museum in Shanghai. Topic. Content The program series, described as a landmark project, is billed as a history of humanity, told through a hundred objects from all over the world in the British Museum's collection. In these programs, I'm traveling back in time, and across the globe, to see how we humans over two million years have shaped our world and been shaped by it, and I'm going to tell this story exclusively through the things that humans have made, all sorts of things, carefully designed, and then either admired and preserved, or used, broken and thrown away. I've chosen just a hundred objects from different points on our journey, from a cooking pot to a golden galleon, from a Stone Age tool to a credit card. Telling history through things, whether it's an Egyptian mummy or a credit card, is what museums are for, and because the British Museum has collected things from all over the globe, it's not a bad place to try to tell a world history. Of course, it can only be a history of the world, not the History. When people come to the museum they choose their own objects and make their own journey round the world and through time, but I think what they will find is that their own histories quickly intersect with everybody else's, and when that happens, you no longer have a history of a particular people or nation, but a story of endless connections. Accompanying the series is a website, described by The Guardian as even more ambitious than the radio series itself, that encourages users to submit items of their own for a place in world history. Along with much interactive content, detailed information on all the objects featured in the radio programs and links to 350 other museum collections across the UK, the radio programs are available on the website permanently for listening or downloading. The museum has adapted exhibitions for the series by including additional easily identifiable plaques for the 100 objects with text based on the program and adding a section to the gallery maps showing the location and numbers of the 100 objects. On 18 January 2010, an hour-long special of the Culture Show on BBC Two was dedicated to the launch of the project. The first part of the series was broadcast on weekdays over six weeks between 18 January and 26 February 2010. After a short break, the series returned with the seventh week being broadcast in the week beginning 17 May 2010. It then took another break in the middle of July and returned on 13 September 2010, running until the 100th object was featured on Friday, the 22nd of October 2010. Topic Reception. Maeve Kennedy of the Guardian described the program as a broadcasting phenomenon. 
while Tim Davey, head of music and audio at BBC Radio, commented that, "...the results have been nothing short of stunning," exceeding the BBC's wildest hopes for the programme. At the time of the writing of Kennedy's article, just before the start of the last week of the series, the radio broadcasts regularly had up to 4 million listeners, while the podcast downloads had totaled 10,441,884. Of these, just over half, 5.7 million, were from the UK. In addition, members of the public had uploaded 3,240 objects, with the largest single contribution coming from Glasgow historian Robert Poole, who submitted 120 objects, all relating to the city of Glasgow, and other museums, a further 1,610, and 531 museums and heritage sites across the UK had been mounting linked events, an unprecedented partnership. Partnership, McGregor said. Museums all over the world are now copying the formula, as thousands of visitors every day set out to explore the British Museum galleries equipped with the leaflet mapping the objects. Writing in The Independent, Philip Henshaw described the series as perfect radio, saying, Has there ever been a more exciting, more unfailingly interesting radio series than the Radio 4? British Museum Venture, A History of the World in 100 Objects? It is such a beautifully simple idea, to trace human civilizations through the objects that happen to have survived. Each program, just 15 minutes long, focuses on just one thing, quite patiently, without dawdling. At the end, you feel that you have learned something, and learned it with pleasure and interest. For years to come, the BBC will be able to point to this wonderful series as an example of the things that it does best. It fulfills, to a degree that one thought hardly possible any more, the BBC's Rythian agenda of improvement and the propagation of learning and culture." Dominic Sandbrook in The Telegraph said that the "...joyously highbrow." series deserves to take its place alongside television classics such as Kenneth Clark's Civilization and Jacob Bronowski's The Ascent of Man. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Objects. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Making us human, 2 million to 9000 BC. Neil McGregor reveals the earliest objects that define us as humans. First broadcast week beginning the 18th of January 2010. Topic: <laughs> After the Ice Age, food and sex, 9000 to 3000 BC. Why did farming start at the end of the Ice Age? Clues remain in objects left behind. First broadcast week beginning the 25th of January 2010. Topic: The first cities and states 4000 to 2000 BC. What happens as people move from villages to cities? Five objects tell the story. First broadcast week beginning the 1st of February 2010. Topic: The beginning of science and literature 1500 to 700 BC. 4000 years ago, societies began to express themselves through myth, maths and monuments. First broadcast week beginning the 8th of February 2010. Topic: Old World, New Powers, 1100 to 300 BC. Across the world, new regimes create objects to assert their supremacy. First broadcast week beginning the 15th of February 2010. Topic: The world in the age of Confucius, 500 to 300 BC. 
Can meanings hidden in friezes and flagons tell us as much as the writings of great men? First broadcast week beginning the 22nd of February 2010. Topic: Empire Builders 300 BC AD 1. Neil McGregor continues his global history told through objects. This week he is with the great rulers of the world around 2000 years ago. First broadcast week beginning the 17th of May 2010. Topic: Ancient pleasures, modern spice AD 1 to 600. Neil McGregor explores the ways in which people sought pleasure 2000 years ago. First broadcast week beginning the 24th of May 2010. Topic: The rise of world faiths AD 200 to 600. Neil McGregor explores how and when many great religious images came into existence. First broadcast week beginning the 31st of May 2010. Topic: The Silk Road and Beyond AD 400 to 700. Five objects from the British Museum tell the story of the movement of goods and ideas. First broadcast week beginning the 7th of June 2010. Topic: Inside the Palace: Secrets at Court AD 700 to 950. Neil McGregor gets an insight into the lives of the ruling elites 1,200 years ago. First broadcast week beginning 14 June 2010. Pilgrims, Raiders and Traders AD 900-1300 How trade, war and religion moved objects around the globe 1000 years ago. First broadcast week beginning the 21st of June 2010. Topic: Status symbols AD 1200 to 1400. Neil McGregor examines objects which hold status and required skillful making. First broadcast week beginning the 28th of June 2010. Topic: Meeting the Gods AD 1200 to 1400. Objects from the British Museum show how the faithful were brought closer to their gods. First broadcast week beginning the 5th of July 2010. Topic: The threshold of the modern world AD 1375 to 1550. Neil McGregor explores the great empires of the world in the threshold of the modern era. First broadcast week beginning the 13th of September 2010. Topic: The first global economy AD 1450 to 1600. Neil McGregor traces the impact of travel, trade and conquest from 1450 to 1600. First broadcast the 20th of September 2010. Topic: Tolerance and Intolerance AD 1550 to 1700. Neil McGregor tells how the great religions lived together in the C 16th and C 17th. First broadcast week beginning the 27th of September 2010. Topic: 
Exploration, Exploitation and Enlightenment AD 1680–1820. Neil McGregor on the misunderstandings that can happen when different worlds collide. First broadcast 4 October 2010. Mass production, mass persuasion, AD 1780–1914. How industrialization, mass politics, and imperial ambitions changed the world. First broadcast week beginning the 11th of October 2010. Topic. The World of Our Making AD 1914 Neil McGregor explores aspects of sexual, political and economic history of recent times. First broadcast week beginning 18 October 2010 Special edition A special radio program on Radio 4, first broadcast on 18 May 2011, featured one of the many thousands of items nominated on the BBC website by members of the public as an object of special significance. The object chosen to be featured on the program was an oil painting depicting a young woman that was nominated by Peter Lewis. The painting, which belonged to Lewis' uncle, Bryn Roberts, was painted from a postcard photograph of Roberts' girlfriend and later wife, Peggy Gullup, by an anonymous Jewish artist for Roberts whilst he was a prisoner of war at Auschwitz in Poland. Topic. Art Fund Prize The British Museum won the 2011 Art Fund Prize for Museums and Galleries for its part in the A History of the World in 100 Objects series. The prize, worth £100,000, was presented to the museum by Jeremy Hunt, Secretary of State for Culture, Olympics, Media and Sport, in a ceremony at London on 15 June 2011. The chairman of the panel of judges, Michael Portillo, noted that the judges were particularly impressed by the truly global scope of the British Museum's project, which combined intellectual rigour and open-heartedness, and went far beyond the boundaries of the museum's walls. The judges were also very impressed by the way that the project used digital media in groundbreaking and novel ways to interact with audiences. Turing exhibition. During 2016 and 2017 a touring exhibition of many of the 100 objects, also titled History of the World in 100 Objects, was held in a number of countries and territories, including Australia, Japan, the United Arab Emirates, Taiwan, and China first at the National Museum of China in Beijing, and then at Shanghai Museum. Due to the conditions encountered while touring different countries some exhibits had to be returned to the British Museum for maintenance during tour, and were replaced by other objects from the British Museum collections. Some controversial exhibits were excluded from the exhibition in some countries. Object 90 Jade Bai with poem, was not included in the exhibition held in China because it may have been looted from the old Summer Palace in Beijing. In addition, a piece of Chinese brocade that had been included in the touring exhibition elsewhere was not included in the exhibition in China because it was collected from the Mogao Caves by Oral Stein under controversial circumstances. See also Our Top Ten Treasures Britain's Secret Treasures a History of Ireland in 100 Objects